So, the good news is that we love the look of film. But the bad news is that we love the look of film. So with film being less practical, less cost efficient, what do we do? Bro, what are you talking about, man? We've got to fake it. Yep, today we're going to go over tips that you can use in Lightroom to fake the film look on your digital photos, specifically in portraits. Let's hop right into Lightroom. First off, go ahead and find a reference photo that you're going to use to emulate for your digital photo. So let's go ahead and see. Let's go to Kodak Portra 400. Google it. Go to images. And there are a lot of images that you can use to reference. Alternatively, you can also change it to any other stock. Let's say Fuji Superia 400 extra maybe. Boom, Google's great. You can go ahead and find any reference images for any sort of scenario that you've shot. And we'll go ahead and go from there. All right, so once you have your photos loaded up into Lightroom, go ahead and click the RA, Reference and Active tab. What you're gonna have to do is go ahead and drag your reference photo to the left and then click the photo that you wanna edit on the right. And so here I've got an actual digital photo of the same exact scene. On the right here is the digital and the left is my reference for the film. I think this was shot on Loma 800, but uh, I don't quite remember. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and focus on the basic adjustments that we can do to this photo. So the first thing we're gonna do is, if you notice in this digital that the highlight is blown out, so we're gonna lower the highlights, try to get that as close as possible to the reference, bring down the whites a bit, and just get the overall exposure as similar as possible. Maybe bring the, the shadows a little bit. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm playing with the exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks. This is shot on raw, so there's a lot more flexibility in what you can do. And also work with the tint a little bit. I'm gonna bring this more to the greens. As you notice, it's, if you go back, it's a little bit too magenta for my liking. What you can do is you can actually zoom in in similar areas. So we've got the colors pretty accurate, I think are pretty close to the reference just from what we had originally. It was a bit too magenta, we brought it up with the greens. Let's work with the shadows a little bit. I like to just play around these sliders. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out now. Now that we've worked on the basics, we're gonna go ahead and go down to the HSL color. And this is where a lot of the magic happens. So let's just go to the HSL first. So in the hues, you can actually click certain areas of the photo and adjust them just on those sort of color ranges. So let me click this. As you notice, the yellows and the reds kind of look a little bit off. So I'm just gonna click and drag either up or down. Down's too much. I'm gonna bring it up. Let's say it about there. Uh, what you can go ahead and do is also click the saturation in that same area and bring it down and try to get it as close as possible. And I sort of switch in between both of these. Just trying to get it as close as possible. Let's work on the yellows next. The yellows, I need a little bit. A little bit more yellow and perhaps turn the saturation up a bit as well. Finally, I click luminance, and this sort of affects how kind of bright each one is. I'll try to get that as close as possible. It's not gonna be perfect, but we'll get it as close as possible. All right, next we're gonna zoom in a little bit here. On both. And I really wanna focus on two things. I wanna focus on their color, of uh, the color of their skin, and also the color of the shadows are the two things I wanna focus on here. So what we might need to go do is go ahead and go back into our basics. And once we've fixed the adjustments on the HSL, readjust the sort of basic exposure and maybe bring up the shadows a little bit. Just trying to get it as close as possible. And then now I'm gonna go on the hues of the actual shadows here and bring those as close as possible to the actual reference. Finally, if you notice that the actual blacks are a little bit too washed out in my active, so what I can do is actually bring down the blacks here, not the shadows, the actual blacks, and that'll bring them down overall. I'll sort of just 
edit as I go. I've noticed that this overall scene now looks a little bit too green. So let me bring it just a little bit back more in the magenta and add a little bit more blue. Cool. Now, if you click the color, you can actually adjust certain colors and certain hues, and this is really helps with skin tones. So if you slide it left and right, it'll time and tell you like what, what we're working with here. I'm trying to fix these oranges a little bit. So I'm going to bring the saturation up a little bit. Maybe work with a hue just a tad, but I think the hue is just about right. And that'll probably get us as close as we can to this. Overall, you can actually play with the vibrance as well. So for this one, I might bring down the vibrance a little bit. So this is a night scene that I've gone ahead and adjusted for the coloring and sort of fix the colors to mimic the reference photo. Let me go ahead and do a studio shot to show you the difference between night and also a well-lit scene. The biggest thing for studio shoots is definitely the coloring of the shadows and also the overall vibrancy of the oranges and the greens. So let's go ahead and fix those. First off, I'm just gonna do a little bit of minor adjustments just to try and get the colors. Let me just zoom in on both of them here. Just trying to get the overall exposures similar. So again, I'm playing with the exposures, contrast, shadows, whites. And I can work with actually the tint as well, just a tad. As you notice, there's a lot of green here in the shadows. So let's put a little bit more green here. Maybe even a little bit of blue. Another trick is if you bring down the saturation while bringing up the vibrancy. That helps a little bit. So this one's going to be big in the HSL, especially the hue. So let me click the orange here and try to match that as close as possible without sort of working too much on his face or his skin, his skin tone. Sorry. We've got that pretty close. The other thing will be the greens here of his shoe. As you notice here, it's a little bit more toned down and neutral. So let me click the hues on his greens here. Kind of get those closer to that while also turning down the luminance because it's not that bright. Maybe bring down the saturation a bit on it too. If you notice that's a little bit too saturated, too vibrant, you can always bring those down again. But already we see a big difference. We can see that this is a, a little bit more toned down and a little bit more neutral, which is exactly what we want. An additional step you can do is you can actually mess with the color grading on the midtones, shadows, and highlights. So if you click the shadows, oftentimes in the shadows, you can actually add a bit of green. If we look closely at this one in the reference, this was shot on Kodak Portra 400. There's a touch of green, not too much. We don't want to overdo it. Everything's a little bit, you know, pretty subtle. So let's go to the shadows here. If we go too much, it looks obnoxious. So let's do just a, just a touch of green, not too much. And then the highlights, I don't know if you can notice this, but it's a little bit magenta. This is a little bit too cold. So let's add a little bit of magenta to the highlights. Cool. So the final step here is we're gonna add some film grain. A lot of people bash on the film grain that you can add digitally here in Lightroom. I actually like it, but I'll show you two ways that you can add grain to your photos. The first one obviously is just add grain straight in Lightroom. What I like to do is zoom in and sort of try to mimic the amount of grain that's in this film photo. Uh, there's three sliders for amount, size, and roughness. What I often do is I add a good amount, try to keep the size relatively small. You can obviously get it bigger, but it gets more blurry. So I try to keep it small and then you can actually add sort of roughness. Usually keep it under 40 for all these, uh, but you just play around with it with your taste. That looks pretty good to me. Let's go ahead and add some grain to this one now as well, the studio shoot. Zoom in in here, let's add some grain. Sometimes the bigger files, you're gonna add more grain. So the final thing you can do is you can add grain in Photoshop. I often do this as well as add grain in Lightroom. So what you do is you right click on your photo, you go to edit in and then Photoshop. So one thing you can do is you can go ahead and Google for film grain textures. I'll actually include three free textures that I have that I often use in the description of this video. So what you'll do is you go ahead and grab this then you click the blending mode, change that to screen. And opacity I'll often change to pretty low. You don't want it to be overbearing. And you can just toggle and see. 
so that adds a little bit more character to it. If it's not enough for you, you can always increase it. Perhaps 20. And there you have it. If you follow those steps, you'll get a photo that's pretty similar to your re reference photo, and I think it mimics the look of film pretty well. I think the easiest way to mimic film photography is to use Lightroom and use the reference active tool so that you can go ahead and look side by side to a film photo in similar conditions and adjust your digital photo to look exactly like that. Again, just make sure to look out for the shadows, the highlights, and finally add grain to your liking and you'll have a final photo that looks pretty darn close to film. If you have any questions or you have any advice on how to edit film photos in Lightroom that you want to share with the community, please leave it in the comments below. I'll go ahead and try to respond to everybody that I can. And finally, as always, I really appreciate you watching this video. Please like, helps a lot, subscribe, and stay tuned for my next video. I'll see you guys in the next one.